basically I want to just touch on, 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 on the, the project in, in a little more detail. Um, so as I mentioned, uh, we are doing 3,417 screenings. We have 17 persons coming from VASH. This project uh, was started actually about four years ago when I was um, planning to become president in 2014 at the Lions Club International Convention in Toronto. Um, I hatched a plan to do this project after seeing and hearing about the Lions Club doing it back in 2001. I said to myself, it's about time that the Lions Club bring back a group to test all of the school children's eyes, and I saw the importance of it. Um, so we, we projected to do the project in my year as a signature project, but we had some hiccups. Financially, we could not, um, the, the funding agency that were to assist, was to assist us did not come true for us. So we postponed it for last year, no, uh, November. It was scheduled uh, where we had everything in place. Hurricane Irma came and totally destroyed our plans and we had to start all over again. And uh, we were very persistent. I had a lot of support from our present president, um, Lion Allison Busby, and the entire board and the club. And uh, we set new dates for um, May 14 through 18. So it was a long time in the works, uh, let's say four years working on this project. And um, we're finally here and it's about a week and a half away. Um, I'd like to stress the importance that we as Lions are volunteering all our time into this. Um, our, our organization is a totally volunteering organization. We volunteer our time. We actually pay dues to be in this club. Um, a lot of people think we, we work for a fee in the Lions Club, but it's absolutely not so. We are complete volunteers. And um, with that, I want to really stress um, that um, we need cooperation in getting this project done. We need cooperation from parents um, preparing their children to, um, um, to come to this project. Um, a lot of children have never been to an eye doctor and um, they may think maybe it might be painful, but parents need to kind of sensitize their, um, their children that it's, it's a very easy, easy and no pain at all. So basically these doctors are coming with fast testing machines and um, within a minute or so, they will have the strength of your eyes checked. Um, it also, we also need the cooperation of teachers um, preparing the children to come to this project. The schools, we are aware that there are schools that have not sent the parental consent forms and we want parents to make sure, fill in those forms and send them out back to the schools because without the parental consent forms being signed, we cannot test the children. So it's important for parents to do their part as well in, in making the project a success. We have done a lot on our end. We have a complete um, transportation plan where we know at exactly at what time each class will be going to the Bel Air Community Center. All of that is in place. We have an excellent transportation team. Russell Bell is handling that part. Um, and uh, the Bel Air Community Center will be set up totally as a makeshift doctor's office with multiple stations, whereby testing will be going on from 7.30 in the morning until 2.30, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So a lot of work has gone into this project. Um, I must say um, it's, it's a very costly project for us, um, and we have been preparing for it for the last year and a half, like I said. Um, we had some additional um, help the last couple of months, and I have to mention um, that organization's name, which is uh, Rouge Noir Casino. Um, they um, they um, did some bingo, bingo fun, uh, fundraising back in December, and they shared the funds between the Rotary, Rotary Club and the Lions Club. So that was to the tune of $24,000. Um, and basically, I need to really thank uh, the Jump Up Casino and its owner, Mr. Antoine Akil, um, and his group of companies. He have other casinos as well. And um, they put 
put up $24,000 to, to really assist and fund. And the Lions Club used some of our reserve funds from last year in, in putting together this project. VOSH is a, also a complete volunteer organization. Um, as a matter of fact, they are paying their own tickets to come and volunteer on St. Martin. Um, initially, when we wanted to, to do the project, it was supposed to be a two-week project. But a lot of doctors do not want to leave their practice for two weeks to volunteer outside of the country. They had to put um, replacement doctors in their place to take care of their clients. So they told us a week is enough, so we would have to try to make the whole entire project work in a week's time. That is why we are very pressed with time. We have, we have, we have it very structured. Um, 7.30 to 2.30, 3 o'clock on most days, um, and it will go fast. It is, uh, most days, it's, we, we're running through about 700 children per day. So lines, we have a holding area, we'll have a holding tent, you know, all of, all of those things are in place for the project. So um, these doctors are arriving here May 12th to May 13th. Um, we have a setup time on May 13th at 5.30 at the Bel Air Community Center, where, where we'll be setting up the room. And from there, on Monday morning, bright and early, it's, it's, it's a go. has been faithfully serving the communities of St. Martin, powering your home and our economy. Come rain or shine, our qualified team of professionals are working hard 24 hours a day to provide you and your family with safe, reliable electricity and water. We use the latest technologies and test our products daily to maintain the highest international standards. Our friendly staff is always there to assist you, whether in person, over the phone, or online. We are committed to constantly improving our products and services, making them more efficient, effective, and environmentally friendly to serve you better today and our next generation of clients tomorrow. GEBE, powering a brighter future. Our friend Mega Wadi is here with tips to save you energy. One, turn your air code temperature up. Two, use a ceiling fan instead. Three, buy energy saving products. Save some green with NVGEBE. This is, is under review and that there is a, a concept uh, a policy already already made. Could, could you uh, make that concept available or could you highlight the changes that are coming in that policy? Thank you, Mr. Haddon. Happy birthday to you. Wish you many more years of good health and happiness. Uh, regarding the 
commercial sex workers industry. Uh, the legislation for that is on its way to me. I requested it last week from the SG, and I will be reviewing it, I guess, during the holidays. And upon return, I will um, make a decision how we're going to proceed with it because the legislation is definitely necessary to avoid all these cases um, that are pending or where others have been convicted. Minister De Weaver, uh, in the past weeks, as the carnival activities have intensified, the, also the police controls have intensified, and some people see this as a deterrent to people going to carnival. Not only are they um, left in uh, road drams when they're trying to get to the village, when they're coming out of the village, the same, while it's understood it's for security and uh, other reasons, it's also dampening the entire feeling of what is our revival festival after everything of Hurricane Irma. Is there a specific reason, um, other than you have more people on the road, that uh, the police officers are out there? Thank you, Ms. Singh, for your question. First of all, we would like everyone to have a very safe carnival. Um, this is um, not a deterrent from stopping you to enjoying carnival or coming to the festival village and enjoying it. But over the years, the numbers have shown that during this time that there may be more break-ins, either in cars or homes. So to avoid that, um, we're, they're out there, the police is out there, and they're doing some preventative searches as well. Uh, you know, would they sometimes discover uh, illegal firearms, um, bats, knives, stuff like that. And to make the whole island safer, I think this is a good step, and we should um, be consistent with it, not just during carnival time, but throughout the year. Thank you, Ms. Singh. Lyndon Brown. Prime Minister, it's a, this is a great day for St. Martin. You have witnessed the signing um, in Washington, D.C., and things are still pending. Um, you don't have a timeline on how soon we're going to see any, um, any, any starting of um, projects and, and how the money is going to be distributed in the different um, areas, um, you don't have a timeline on that. But maybe you can tell us, maybe uh, you may have something to tell us. Thank you for that question. Believe me, if we could have started yesterday with those funds, we would have started yesterday. Unfortunately, this is not the case. And the administrative agreement was only signed on April 16th. And that means that within short, so I'm, I'm suspecting within by the end of the month or so, that we will have those funds. What is key right now is how prepared are we to start execution of these early recovery projects. And those are the areas that we have been focusing on so that the moment that the money is on the account, the, pro the, the projects will you know, be implemented. We're looking at recovery of um, repairment of roofs. We're looking at various different things, the, the repairment of the police station. So once the money's there, we can do it. That's, that's the, the key thing. You can't do something if you don't have the money with it. And as I indicated, you know, I understand the frustration. And um, government did what they could with the monies that government had at the time. But of course, you know, certain funding is going to be needed, and this is the only access to, um, to monies as it re relates to recovery and, um, of St. Martin, and we will just have to be patient, a little bit more patient, in order for us to um, feel and reap the benefits of what is going to be given to us.
ILM. Connecting you. People all across St. Martin are switching to a more rewarding experience. The Whip MasterCard Fun Miles Credit Card, better known as My Card. Earn one fun mile for every $2 spent, even abroad and online. This will quickly get you a ton of fun miles to redeem for travel, shopping, food, fuel, and much more. But there's more to My Card. Worldwide acceptance, an EMV chip for extra security, and 250 free fun miles with first use. Switch to My Card today at Wib. Once more, thanks to all those that had us helped. Like uh, Lion Davy said, it was a project long in the making. We did have some setbacks, but I remember when I took over from him, uh, I made a promise that we're going to get through with this year for sure. And I would like to thank, uh, like we said, Jump Up Casino for jumping in at a time when we thought that we did not see the end of the, the, the tunnel, but then all of a sudden we got uh, information, we would like to help, and he gave us, with all the help from the community who partake in the bingo activity in the month of December, he gave us a big check together with the Rotary Club also received that, and that's why we are sitting here today. We are anxious to get to that Monday to see this project lift off from the road and at the end of the tunnel to see that the students will be happy if they needed glasses that their grades also improve. So basically we are all happy. We are happy to have you all here present and we hope to see you all also when the day comes. We definitely will set a date for the media to um, be invited to take a look at the project so we'll be definitely working on that just as we are, we'll be inviting government officials as well to the project as well. In order to take the children away from school, during school hours, you need to have um, um, timetable deviation. Um, so we had to meet with the inspectorate, the Division of um, Inspection for Education, and we met with them, and then we, we also officially um, informed the minister that we would want this request and the minister agreed and then we met with the um, inspectorate team and then a decision was made that all schools, all school boards, uh, all schools would have to submit their schedule asking for timetable deviation so the students could come to this project and we also asked the ministry to assist us with the bus fares for the students because you know the students have to be bused from school to the project and back so that's where the ministry came in very um, instrumental with us, um, collaborating with us with this project. And I also would like to state right now, um, because of the time, we start at 7.30 in the morning and then we run until 1.30, 2 o'clock. So some classes, those classes that come after 12 will run into the jam that they might not be back in school when school is over at 1 o'clock. So we're asking parents and also teachers and principals to have patience with us. It's a one-time experience for the children. Um, we know the importance for the students and we're asking parents, those parents who pick up their students, you know, to at least their children to wait by the school and the students will be bused back to the school where they can take them and then they can take them home. We could not do everyone in the morning hours because time doesn't permit. So some classes did go over 12 o'clock, so they would be finishing like 1, 1.30, you know, and then we take them back to the school. So we ask cooperation from everyone and bear with us with this. Great.
it's been said that behind every door, possibility awaits. How much possibility depends on which door you open first. Every day, we help our customers discover the possibilities in their lives. It all starts with a conversation. Scotiabank. Discover what's possible. One. Two. Three. Four. This is how common it is to develop a mental illness. One out of every four. 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 But there is hope. Today, most mental illnesses can be managed and treated. Visit your general doctor if you feel concerned about your thoughts and behaviors or have some difficulty dealing with some of life's issues. If you have been diagnosed and are suffering from a mental illness, keep in mind these four points to help you manage your mental health. One, get regular checkups with your general doctor. Two, stay on your treatment plan to prevent relapses. Three, find a strong support group in your family and friends. And four, never be afraid to ask for help and look for the warning signs of your illness. Remember, you are not alone. We are as close as one. Two. Three. Four. Learn about mental health illness by going to the Mental Health Foundation's website at www.mhf-sxm.com. Hello, Sir Martin. My name is Jose Helga and I play basketball. I have organized basketball events in St. Martin. Sport matters to me because it makes everybody come together in unity. So I challenge the businesses community to step up for sports and help us rebuild and repair our facility. I'm also asking the community to nominate local businesses in your area to take on the challenge and step up for sports because sports matter. Check out the Department of Sports SSN Facebook page for more information. Hashtag sports matter, hashtag are you in. Okay, we have a beautiful costume here. You're, you're in the par um, parade as an individual? Individual, yes. Individual oh. I'm playing, yes. Okay, tell me a little bit about your okay, costume. The name, of, the name of the group I'm playing with is the World Warriors, and the name of the costume is, he's going to tell you because he's a designer. He designer, what's his name? He's a designer. Sano, Sano. You're, Sano. Sano, you're the, you design this costume. Yes. Tell me a little bit about it. World Warriors and all, and all the crew design this costume. It's called the Yellow Wobble. The Yellow Wobble. Okay, and your name is? Laurel Larinel. I know. <laughs> Laurel, all the best to you and good work. Congratulations.